homework assignment is filmed before, before a live studio audience. Hey, buddy, guess what? What? No, you have to guess. You have to actually guess. Homophobic pastors. Wow. Well, really? Yeah. Seriously, Bunny, is that your answer? Jesus Christ, Bunford. Yeah, I have. Well, well, I have one question for you, Bunny. Just one question. Okay. Who hurt you? <laughs> Who hurt you? Because I ask you, guess what? And your answer was homophobic pastors. So really, Bunny, who hurt you? <laughs> Tell me. Show me on the podcast where he touched you. A, 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 homo, a homophobic pastor. Is that's 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 who's hurt me? Okay. And, now, and that's what's made me afraid of the bratwurst. Nice. Now, I was going to say, <gasps> Bunny, you need therapy, but you're already in therapy, so. <laughs> It's obvious that Western medicine has failed you. Yes. There's a new boss, baby? Yeah. All, all, all of those quote-unquote doctors yes. with their quote-unquote medical degrees. That's just a bunch of nonsense, Bunny. Only stupid people get doctorates. That's the easy way to do it. I may, I may have to, I, I, I may be in dire need of a coffee enema. Yeah. So, so that's where I come in. So let's, let's do some real therapy. Okay. I'm talking patchouli and incense style therapy. Okay. Okay. So Bonnie, I'm going to lead you through some guided meditation here. Okay. okay. So what I'm going to need you to do, I need you to close your eyes. Okay. And really close them. Cause I'll hear if your eyes aren't closed. Okay. I will hear your eyes being open. So you need to close your eyes, okay? Just close them. They are closed. I was trying to I was trying and to I sound am... like uh, Sarah Silverman from Wreck It Ralph. <laughs> uh, okay. Now take deep breaths, okay? Just take deep breaths. Nice deep breaths. And while you're breathing in and breathing out. Try to visualize that you're breathing in good things and you're breathing out bad things. Don't, so, don't you need to be talking so, softer? Yeah, I'm trying, but it's okay. difficult because the house is is always loud. So try and try and breathe in mental health. <laughs> However, it doesn't work like that. And and visualize <laughs> breathing out Michael Bay movies. Oh, okay. Breathe in, <sighs> exercise, and uh, the poetry, and breathe out Betsy DeVos. <sighs> now, imagine you're on a beach. You're on a beach. Eleanor, you yelling for Bella is not helping Bunny with his therapy, okay? Bella will, when Bella is done, she'll come out, okay? Yeah, okay. Okay, we'll just guard the TV for her, okay? Yeah, 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 she, she hasn't even touched it. Now, imagine you're on a beach. You're on a beach. What am I wearing? The waves are peacefully lapping up to your feet. Lap, 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 lap. Seagulls are chirping in the distance. Seagull noise! Seagull noise! A family of 14 shitty white kids kick sand in your face. You accidentally sat on a dir dirty hypodermic needle. Okay, you know what? The beach wasn't a great idea. Visualize yourself leaving that beach, because I'm sorry, Bunny, the beach in your head is shit. That's not my fault. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't come up with your head. You know, yeah, I, I, you know, I didn't come up with that. I'm not God. I'm not Joe Pesci. So, <laughs> so I, I'm sorry. It, it, you, you have a shitty beach in your head. And I, I apologize, but also, you know, I'm honest. So let's go someplace else in your mind, Bunny. Let's go someplace else. Uh, 
Again, eyes closed, deep breaths, breathing in, positive, <gasps> and breathing out bad things. So breathe in a sensible breakfast and breathe out the Oklahoma educational system. Just breathe in, breathing out. Now imagine you're at a spa. Imagine you're at a relaxing spa. There's music, relaxing music in a relaxing way. There's a sense, relaxing sense, sense that in in a re relaxing lavender style, lavender sense. There's lights, dimmed lights, very relaxing lights that are dimmed. Am, uh, it's a spa. I, I, it's a spa. Am I on too. the Bachelor? Is somebody well, going well, to give a me spa, a rose? So, well, well, it's a spa, so you also have to imagine a fuck ton of Korean women working there. Okay. And they're all trash talking you in a language you don't understand, and you're you're not one hundred percent sure that they're trash talking you, but they keep saying things in Korean really loud, and then looking at you and laughing, and you're not fully sure what's going on. And now they're doing that weird cup thing on your back, where they're cupping your back and breaking skin, and it hurts like fuck, and you're not sure how this is supposed to help you. But then you remember that next they're gonna put your feet in one of those weirdo tanks with fish. And then the fish eat all your dead skin, and you're kind of filled with a bit of anxiety about that because you've got really gnarly feet, and you don't want these Korean ladies to hate you more than they already hate you. Okay, we're leaving the spa in your head, bunny. <laughs> now, I know, you know, I'm grounded in reality, and I know that fictional places of business in your subconscious don't have Yelp pages. Yeah. But if they do, I would leave them a really shitty review. So I'm sorry. Uh, hey, your your subconscious does not have good spots. Again, that's I, not I my would, I would leave a shitty review for my mind itself. Fucking same. You know what, Bonnie? Let's just forget the guided meditation and the breathing. Just I don't know. Just try and smoke more pot, I guess. That or, uh, yeah. As or as soon as it can. <laughs> or or hemp oil. CBD. Would that help? C B D. I actually do think CBD would help. Yeah, helps me. It, cause it helps. It helps destiny. It's like no, I don't have a job where I can smoke weed or I would. Yeah. So I have to do the non-THC shit. Yeah. Because traditionally, I smoke a good bit. Yeah. Which means I generally don't get too particularly high because you get a tolerance. Mm -hmm. And it still helps. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so do you? Is that makes me lean toward the CBDs. Huh? I'm interrupt your podcast. Do you? Do you have like panic disorder, anxiety disorder? Yeah. So both of those. Mm -hmm. Uh. Yeah. Same. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the difference is, though. Um, panic disorder more comes with the, uh, like fear of dying. You have uh accelerated heart rate um anxiety is more of a silent thing um now it's not the same for all people that's just what it's described as yeah. i know i have both i have more panic disorder than i do anxiety disorder and so i'm just trying to mellow myself out with this liquid weed oil yeah and i put it under my tongue and i'm supposed to only do eight drops a day but i do more like 20 drops a day yeah don't tell my husband. <laughs> we won't tell him. But I mean, we will tell Kevin Swanson. Don't yeah, tell him. Yeah. No, we probably will have <laughs> no. to tell Kevin Swanson. Just to be fair, Bonnie, I tried to help you out with the guided meditation. I just want to say that I did my part. Yes, you did. I also want to say that you'll be getting my bill in the mail in about two to three weeks. <laughs> Hint, hint, five figures. Spoiler alert. <laughs> well, that was fun now, wasn't it? Where were we? Ah, yes, it's homework time yet again on the old Pope on Felt podcast. <clears throat> People of the internet, your attention, please. Cease your condom snorting and kindly pay attention. <laughs> I can't believe. Have you heard this, funny Young people. Young people, teens are snorting condoms. Yes. 
I have. Heard well, I heard about young people snorting condoms on a clickbait article headline that I shared without reading on social media, which means we're in a crisis. Yes. <laughs> And more than likely, the media, you know, one media place saw, found five videos of people snorting condoms and then wrote an article about how a lot of people are doing this. And yes. then that was picked up by other media outlets who grew it bigger. And then another media outlet grew it bigger. And now we're in a condom snorting crisis. That is exactly what I heard. It's already yeah. a meme. Yeah. It's, it's been two days and it's already a fucking yeah. meme. Each week, and, and, the and my and my stand on that is, please, go ahead. Okay, we seriously need a bit of social Darwinism here. Uh, we just <laughs> do. So you yes, can start whatever you want as long as you're not hurting anybody else with it. Please, right? I mean, I used to do it with spaghetti noodles, but I mean that's different than a condom. <laughs> yeah, yes, a little bit different. Snort condoms, eat Tide Pods. You know, <laughs> well, at least they're using them. Yeah, I, I, I think I dreaded... think we should introduce the <laughs> stick a fork in the light socket challenge. Ooh, that's nice. like a good one. I'd probably I'd probably participate in that one. I didn't do the <laughs> ice and salt challenge, which is an older one. Mm -hmm. The cinnamon challenge, no, but I would definitely do the kill yourself challenge. I haven't done any of these challenges. I wanted I, to do the Tide Pod challenge. I, I did the get married and have five kids challenge. Oh, see, that's what I'm working on. Yeah, that was exciting. Still waiting for the big payoff for that one. That's not going to come. Yeah, no, it's not going to come. <laughs> Maybe a sixth child if you're not careful. Each week, the dreaded Council of Destinies chooses a homework assignment via the fiery ritual of carousel. I put you in there. I you Why? In there. Yeah, I wrote you. Huh? Because I always pick like a like a member of the family, and you're a member of the oh, family. Oh, thank you. And this week, it's a very special double sized homework assignment as we dive once again into the world of supernatural. Oh wait, I'm sorry, I read that wrong. Supernatural. Supernatural, the TV show that will not die. I said that last week on the podcast, and in between last week and this week, the CW officially picked up Supernatural for a 14th season. Really? Okay. It's going to be it's going to be heading into season 14. And at this point, everybody's just got to give Supernatural some goddamn respect. Yeah. I mean, 14 seasons for anything is impressive. Uh I mean, this is true. Yes. Freaks and Geeks was around for half a season and people are still shitting themselves over that. Supernatural somehow was a, started on the WB and survived the transition from the WB to the CW and then have, has now stayed for 14 seasons. And it, I mean, even if you know nothing about Supernatural, God damn, that deserves some respect. But Jesus fucking Christ. They, I mean, that's that's impressive for any show. They're getting close to 300 episodes. You're close to 300 Yeah. Episodes. Yeah, I'm close to 200 episodes. And that's damn impressive Ooh, for which... anything. In fact, it's surprising to me how little fanfare this show actually gets in the media and American society in general. It's like society is going, wow, 300 episodes in this television climate? Let's celebrate. Oh, wait, it's a sci-fi show. Okay, who gives a fuck? Everybody leave. <laughs> it's a science fiction show. Let's all go back to our houses. Like, seriously, if Supernatural were a romantic drama set in a hospital, then Entertainment Tonight would never get done having orgasms. Yes. Um, are you talking Grey's Anatomy? I was, I was actually thinking ER. Oh, see, ER is not as good as Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. And this week, we will be focusing on two different episodes that both have their focus on the same thing. Television. Yes. This, this week, we will be discussing two episodes. Season 5, Episode 8, Changing Channels. And one of the most recent episodes, Season 13, Episode 16, Scooby Natural. Yes. And a lot of people... When they first announced this Scooby Natural episode, a lot of people just kind of rolled their eyes and said, oh, so Sam and Dean will be 
joining forces with Scooby-Doo. That's not realistic. Bitch, you haven't, you don't have a son that forced you to watch the Scooby-Doo WrestleMania mystery movie at least 75 times. <laughs> you want to talk about unrealistic? WWE owns an entire town in this movie. <laughs> you know what happens at the end of it? Scooby-Doo wins the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania. And you say, that, and you say yeah. that's not believable? Yeah, no. No, uh, this episode of Supernatural is more believable than John Cena saving the Scooby gang from a giant rolling boulder. <laughs> the one thing that I do believe is that every time John Cena appears, his annoying ass uh, theme music plays. <laughs> I believe that's in every situation. Like, oh, uh, he's at a funeral. <laughs> For like his grandmother, once he walks into the funeral parlor, John Cena! <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah, Maxwell's got it. Thank you, Maxwell. Okay. <laughs> now, here's the tricky part. See, we've already done our fair share of Supernatural yes. already on this podcast, I believe, either um, vertently or inadvertently. Yes. If that's a word. So, so now we're at the point in the homework segment where we discuss like the, st the stats, you know, the history of the homework. And I believe we've already kind of done that. So, so what do we do now? Well, I was going to just make shit up about Supernatural. Yes. But then I'd have the Supernatural family after me, the fan base, the mm -hmm. SPN fandom, mm -hmm. the Supernatural mafia. And I do not want that. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot put that curse on me, Ricky Bobby. So let's, here's the cliff notes. Here's the cliff notes history of Supernatural. There's this guy, his name is Eric Kripke. Kripke? Uh, growing up, he made horror movies with his friends in high school. Same. And he grew up, he went to Hollywood. He did a few low-budget movies that I don't think anyone ever saw. Uh, but then, like he he got a big job. He he got a job at the WB, uh, which was a station for you younger kids out there. It was a TV station, and their their mascot was the racist frog. Yes. Which one? Uh, uh, hello, my baby. Hello, oh, my honey. Right. Hello, my rock time girl. Yeah, that racist that frog. Racist frog. So. Eric Kripke got a job with WB working on, apparently, in 2003, the WB, maybe this is a reason why the WB isn't around anymore, they said, you know what we need? A sexy Tarzan TV show. Uh, Guys, you that sexy Tarzan. So apparently there is a sexy Tarzan, Tarzan show in 2003. That was so bad it was canceled after eight episodes. But he had the foot in the door. That was that was Eric Kripke's foot in the door with the WB, a, a channel that will no doubt always be around. Interesting fact: in two thousand and four, Eric Kripke started work on a suspiciously familiar movie. It um, it's called. It, the movie was called Boogeyman. Apparently, it was the number one film in America at the time it was released. So this was like a hit. But I, so I, 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 I've I've seen it, but I get the feeling that there is more than one Boogeyman. Yeah, yeah, no, I think so too. But this film, uh, let's see if this is, is is in any way familiar to you. It's about a young man played by a WB pretty boy who is on a WB show, mainly for teenage girls, he plays a young man who, after his mother is killed mysteriously, decides to hunt down the supernatural monster that killed his family. Hmm, huh, that plot does sound familiar. Where have yes, I seen that plot before? It does. You know what? I Now I know. Yeah, that's the plot of Gilmore Girls. Yes. Lorelai and Rory... Hunting down the demons that killed the dad. Uh huh. Yes. So that's that's the entire. Uh, more girls. They ripped it off. So in 2005, the WB picked up his familiar-sounding 
TV show plot about two brothers who hunt supernatural beings that that killed their mom. In the beginning, it was really pretty much just early X Files. Yeah. Here is the monster of the week. We are in this city now, in this town, and we will deal with this monster. Have fun in this forty-seven minutes sort of show, you know? Yeah, like like early X Files. Yes, I, I that saw was when I those... liked X Files when they started getting grandiose plot. Is when I kind of tapped out. I I, I like the grandiose plots. Got to got yeah. to admit it. I'm with you, buddy. Yeah. But again, this show deserves so much more credit than it's given. It started in 2005 on the WB network. How this show is still on the air is a mystery. Oh, wait. No, it's not. It's still on the air because the leads are cute and because the writers are constantly queer baiting. Okay. I guess that that was actually easier to explain than I thought it was going to be. Also, this is this is something that I point out so much that Natasha gets about it one of the executive producers of this tv show is mick g mick g he's the fast cut music video action movie doofus responsible for two charlie's angels movies oh and we still and let Termin- him work yeah, and Terminator Salvation, which which I, I remember liking, but then I also remember Hollywood quickly uh, acting like it doesn't exist. Like I like Terminator Salvation, but then Hollywood is like, yeah, let's just let's erase this. Yeah, yeah. So I see that McG credit at the forefront of every episode of supernatural and 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 i i just groan because fucking charlie's angels bunny charlie's angels they make two of those movies i i and i don't know why well actually i do know why because it was drew barrymore's production company uh, yeah yeah so originally kripke said i have a plot i have a, a, a an epic plot for this show and it's going to be contained. So this show will be exactly three seasons long. The story I want to tell is exactly three seasons long. But then maybe, oh, oh, shit, we're going to actually last for three seasons? I'm sorry. Okay. Five seasons long. <laughs> the story for this show is five seasons long. But after that, I'm out, okay? After that, I'm out. I have a story to tell, and it will end after season five. After that, it's just going to get silly. So, yeah, uh, the main plot of the show ended in season five, and then Kripke left. And a number of different showrunners came and went, but the plot of the show, you know, it the main plot ended in season five, and then after that they added all these other things. The show stayed on the air. Some some credit... Uh, some credit the show's staying power to the inclusion of an angel named Castiel uh, onto the show. Yeah. Um, the thing I love about Castiel is that originally he was only going to be in four episodes, five episodes, six episodes, a handful of episodes. And he's like, oh, so this is kind of like a, like a a small, what is that noise? Who's got the vibrator? Oh, uh, I I had my phone on top of the computer. So, (laughs) so, so that was actually my vibrator. I'm uh, masturbating and sitting in the same time. That's hot. With, um, my third hand. Nice. (laughs) That's awesome. I'm so glad you got that. You, thank you, because out of my vagina, it's not crazy. Yeah. So, so Kat, the guy who plays Castiel, gee, what is his name again? We should talk about him more on the podcast. Um, Mookie Wilson or something, I believe. Mookie Wilson. I think his name is. I think his name is High Fructose Corn Syrup. I believe is his name. Anyway, he's like, oh, I'm only going to be in a handful of episodes. Great. Then I'll do a really difficult voice that hurts my throat and will cause me to lose my voice. Because it'll be fine because I'm barely going to be on this show. Oh, wait, I'm in every episode now? Well, I guess my throat's fucking screwed. (laughs) So so I, I just love that. I just love that every time he shows up. Sam, Dean. It's like, Jesus Christ, I, I love Supernatural, especially when uh, all three of them get into uh, Batman offs. Yes. <laughs> Sam, Dean, Sam and Dean, 
I'm Ca- I am Castiel, and I sound more like Batman. No, you don't. I do. Both of you shut up. I do. Which one of us is talking now? I have no idea. Robin! <laughs> so, I really love that. And, of course, my favorite episodes of Supernatural, it, which has lasted for oh, for 13 seasons now and definitely hasn't jumped the shark in any way. My favorite episodes of Supernatural are, are the ones with Poochie the Rapping Dog. They added him in season 10. He's Poochie the Rapping Dog who rides a skateboard. And he's awesome. He's he's wiggity dope fresh. I uh, It's my favorite. I, I don't know if you're kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the great part about that. That's yeah. the great part about that. Now, originally, originally, I wanted to focus exclusively on Scooby Natural, the utterly ridiculous Supernatural Scooby Doo crossover. But in the beginning, they mention an episode from season five, which I love, called Changing Channels. So we're covering both episodes because I love changing channels it's one of my favorite episodes of the show i just really love self-aware fourth wall breaking meta type of shit yes so so of course the one character of supernatural that i love more than any other character is chuck his name is chuck and he's a a, an author and he starts writing this series of books and they become kind of popular and then um one and uh, then he stops writing them. He stops writing these books, but but they these books that he wrote gains a cult following so much so that Sam and Dean go to a comic book store and, and they go in pretending to be FBI agents like they like to do. And the the guy running the comic book store is ah that's really good cosplay. That's really good. You guys look just like Sam and Dean. <laughs> Yeah, and they freak out, and they go, "What are you talking about, Sam and Dean? You know the hunters." What? Wait, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the supernatural books, and, and it turns out that this guy Chuck is actually a prophet, and that these crappy pulp books that he's been that he wrote for years are actual things that are happening to Sam and Dean. Uh huh. Later. Later on, it turns out that he's God, but uh, that, that's that's way in the future. Anyway, it, the episode after changing channels, Sam and Dean go to a supernatural convention. Uh-huh. Okay. And I love that episode so much. And they pull into the supernatural convention, and as they park the car, they see, like, 20 other cars of theirs. <laughs> You know, and other people who are dressed as Sam and Dean are, are like, uh, making fun of the way they're dressed and how they act. Yeah. Oh, you think you're good? Yeah. Well, check us out. Anyway, I love Chuck. So let's talk Supernatural. The first yes. episode that we're talking about, Season 5, Episode 8, it's called Changing Channels. I love this. I love this episode, Bunny. Okay. I liked it better than other episodes of supernatural that i've seen um okay it did not kill me but it had its it had its its spots yeah japanese so Sam and Dean game are fighting show with... okay it also did what did you say japanese game show yes nutcracker it it also reminded me of the Jonathan episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Now, which see, I, I, I know nothing of, of that. Jonathan was, was a, a character who was like in one episode, and then in later episodes you see him kind of sneaking around in the background places. And then there was this one episode where everything changed they did they did the whole beginning you know the whole opening sequence uh and it was all centered around jonathan for no fucking reason until you get into the into the episode uh, and jonathan had found a spell he cast and and made him the most popular kid in the world oh 
So okay. that so w- with them redoing Supernatural redoing the the opening to fit to fit that kind of sitcom thing that was going on. Oh yeah. Yeah. Y- you know, it, it was like <clears throat> balky, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So yeah. so that's why it reminded me of it and that was kind of fun. Nice. Yeah. So Sam and Dean are fighting with an archangel that they call the trickster, but basically is Loki, but his name is also Gabriel. He was the first quote unquote celestial on the show, technically. Anyway, this is his fourth appearance on the show. Yeah. Um in the beginning, there there are certain things when I watch these episodes on my own, there are certain things that my wife pointed out to me that 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 when I'm seeing the episode on my own, I go, oh, okay, so yeah, there's that part that Natasha said, there's that other part that Natasha said. And I think it's important to note that in the beginning of this episode, Dean is watching slash drooling all over the show Dr. Sexy MD. Yes. I just think there's some real uh, 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 queer baiting there. I would have to sh- agree, yes. Then then later he's in the show. He's in Dr. Sexy MD. Um, and he goes gaga once he sees the actual Dr. Sexy. Yes, he did. Which okay. made me yeah, feel a bit you, uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, you can you can literally slow that down and see his facial gestures when he sees Dr. Sexy MD. And yeah, it, 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 it's remarkable. Yes. If you slow that down, like my wife has, like, like supernatural fans have, you see that Dean definitely has the hots for Dr. Sexy MD. Oh yes. Um. Later Dean gets shot and the boys basically have to survive 24 hours of various TV shows and commercials in order to escape uh, this trap that the trickster has set for them. Hi, I was just mentioning a, a Dean going gaga over Dr. Sexy MD. Go on. So so we've we've already passed that. So next No, we haven't passed that. Okay. <laughs> then, then, okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Who's in my role? Can I have a bite? I Destiny, but she's she, I don't know where she is right now. She left her hemp oil. Next is a Japanese TV show, a game show that looks remarkably like an actual game that we watched in an old homework segment. Oh, okay, yes. We watched that one because of this episode. Yeah, yeah, we watched, we watched, we did that as homework specifically because of because of changing channels. Because of this episode, yeah. Because the, this is a the, the Japanese game show that exists, and yeah. So um, when one of the writers knew, <laughs> yeah. So when we first, when I first said we have to do Scooby Natural, uh, I'm like, okay, well, this is a big episode. We can focus just on Scooby Natural. But then when they do the beginning, where it's w- with, uh, but but Gabriel's dead, or is he? Then I'm yeah. like, oh, well, they're talking about changing channels. We kind of have to do both. I wanted to do both, so now I've opened it up to do both. That's why we're not doing a Steve's historical approximations this week. Or Shap, as I like to call it. Wait, wait, you mean you still could have? I still could have, but... Yes. Yes. And you guys could have went over that historical... Well, 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 fuck Scrappy-Doo. It's it's just fuck (laughs) Scrappy-Doo. Of course. Fuck that piece of shit. We'll but, but we'll get to that. Um, uh, that's when that's finally when the when the boys learn that that they have to basically play through these various shows in order to survive, which leads to a great genital herpes commercial. I used it in class. Natasha used it in class. Okay. In one of her classes for college. Kudos to her. And honestly, if I was watching this on CW, there would be a couple of seconds where I would have thought that this commercial was real. <laughs> okay. Like every once in a while when SNL would fool you. Yeah. And you'd be like, oh, shit, this is a fake commercial. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is a fake commercial. I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> yeah. Side effects of herpexia include... Then they go back to the sitcom. Then a procedural cop show that Dean hates. Yeah. Oh, I bought a vape. And then on that show, they think they killed the trickster. 
And then Sam is their car. FYI, the car is called okay. Baby, and basically, it's another star of the show. Yes, you. Yes. Uh, who was Gabriel's brother? Who Who was he talking about? Who there? was Gabriel's brother? Gabriel's an angel. Uh, Gabriel is an angel, so basically, Gabriel is related to. God to Lucifer to Cass to yes, everybody. Gabriel, well, well I was kind of wondering if maybe it was Lucifer. In, in the show, Gabriel's an archangel, so technically he is one of the archangel uh, four, which is Lucifer, Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel. No, I gotta get stuck. Okay. Wait, right. we're suspicious that there might be a fifth one out there that they haven't informed us of. G- Gabriel, I mean, Gabriel blows the trumpet for. Gabriel blows the trumpet for the apocalypse. He what? Gabriel blows the trumpet for the apocalypse. Gabe. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Who might be that? Who might not be that? I don't know. We'll be back for the laundry. Well, well, I hope so. Well, yeah, we. I, yeah. I would not. I normally wouldn't leave, but they close at nine. Yeah, go, go, go. So I gotta go. Um, yeah, and, and that's that's made evident by this episode. Yeah. Because he wants, he wants Dean and Sam to play their parts. And that's the whole point of the episode. I'm not going to meta this, but that's the whole point of the episode. Okay. Dean and Sam have to play their parts in order to survive. Yes. I'm pointing out all of the like extremely gay things that you have pointed yeah. out over the years. I paused it and I was like, Steve, 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 look at this face. Look at him. Look at him. Yeah, yeah the face he makes when he finally meets Dr. Sexy MD. When, it's fucking yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, when Dr. Sexy MD walks in and and just the face that Dean makes and how he, he fumbles his words like he's a fucking schoolgirl and, like and being confronted with her crush. And in particular and he the realizes that it's not the real doctor. Yeah. And in particular the yeah. corners of his mouth. Like like his lips yeah. want yeah. want to purse. Yeah. I'm just there's, saying. there's also the other extremely gay scene is when Dean is getting the stuff out of the trunk of the car. Yeah. When Sam is Knight Rider. But ah, Sam yeah. is the car. Is- so yeah. suddenly they're literally doing butt play <laughs> on an episode yeah. of Supernatural. Yeah, that's that. They they totally they were like, here, have a little bit of a incest implications. Yeah. Yeah, and he's Dean says it. They're like, where'd you get the holy oil? Well, you guess you could say we pulled it out of Sam's ass. Yeah. <laughs> well, how, how long ago was that? That was season five, so that episode was kind of a while ago, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, but you know what? They still have occasional um, brother incest and play, like hinting at it, yeah. but not as mad much like now that they have. They, like Dean is so fucking bisexual. It's ridiculous, and people don't want to acknowledge that. And the writers have plausible deni- deniability with everything that they do. But like, it's there. The implication is there. The hints are there. The teasing is there. The fucking uh, what is it called, honey? What? Queer baiting. Queer baiting is there. Yeah. It's always there. But they always do it in a way that it can be denied. If they're asked about it. Yeah, writing about supernatural this is the most. But like, I've I don't understand the word how. Queer baiting. I don't understand how you can look at how Jensen plays that scene with Dr. Sexy as Dean yeah. and say, oh, yeah, no, that man is 100% home, uh, heterosexual. Yeah. I don't see how you can do that, even if you're a general audience. I do not consider myself a general audience because I met the shit out of Supernatural and, and like deep in the fandom. But even people in the general audience can't look at that and be like, ah, tch, nah. It's a man crush. You want to be besties. That's no, no. That is not the look. And that is not the way you act around a best friend. Yeah. No. You want to be balls deep in him. Also, also, I forgot to mention this in the beginning of the episode, but uh, some person was killed and the police say that it's a bear and they interview the wife who witnessed it. And she swears that it was the Hulk. Lou Ferrigno Hulk. Yes. Yes. Uh, wow, what an interesting, uh, what an, what an, a, a, what a totally on purpose tie in to this week's movie. Yes. That wasn't at all a coincidence. I totally planned that in advance since we're doing The Incredible Hulk. <laughs> and, uh, 
that was definitely not a bizarre coincidence that the sort of kind that keeps happening on the show. Yeah. Nope, I planned it. I did. Did I? Oh, well, shit. No, we've you got were to. there. You were there. I was. I just forgot. No, we've got two. Well, those ones are fun. They say fun nuggets on them. We have a lot of chicken nuggets in the house. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I mean, okay, I gotta give it to this. At least you bought the Tyson brand. Yeah. Well, see, 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 here's what happened, buddy. Steve is not always the the um, most, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? He doesn't Attentive. remember things yeah. um, often, especially yeah. in times of, of um, stress. Especially in times of firing, apparently. Especially in times of, fuck, we gotta get home to take the kids to Gordon Cooper. Um, yeah. So, because we were at Sam's Club, and I was like, let's, he was like, do we have stuff for lunches? These kids are home all week, and I am not prepared to feed them lunch. And I was like, okay, cool. So, we bought this big ass bag of chicken nuggets, like one does when you have a million kids to feed. And I forgot about that and went and bought a big ass thing of nuggets. So, now we have two big ass bags of chicken nuggets. Yeah. Because. Our kids are going to be really well fed with chicken. They're going to be nuggeted. You, you know 100%. what? You you know what would be really nice to do with all those extra chicken nuggets? Eat them. See if anybody needs them down at the Squirrel Church. Yeah, at the Squirrel Church. That's a oh, good. It's a good idea. Nice. So, what are you trying to? We we need to infiltrate the cult. It, it would be no. You're just being neighborly. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Say no more. Yes. Ah, yes. Yes. Neighborly. Yes. Yeah. I'm down with that. I can't open these. So, so here's where the boys learn that Loki the trickster is actually Archangel Gabriel. Once they learn that, oh my God, the scenery chewing that Gabriel does is like I like. Like, Cookie Monster does not chew the scenery this much. Yes. He starts monologuing so over the fucking top. Wait, what are you talking about? When they have him in, like, the circle. Oh, in the and, Holy and, Land? Yeah, and they're, oh, there, I thought you meant they're like, there in the... When they're in that, uh, the hotel room and he comes in? No, no, no. That the cast yeah. comes in? Yeah. Oh. No, I'm talking about they have him in the circle and they find him, like, who are you? And finally, like, he admits everything that, and uh, okay, the apocalypse and all that. Okay, do you want a frozen that. nugget? Because that's what you're going to get unless you let me cook them. Really, Here, Eleanor? She's going to chew on a frozen nugget. Yeah. They're fully cooked. Nugget. It says fully cooked yeah. in the bag. I don't want anybody to think I'm giving my kid raw chicken. Yeah. <laughs> it's they're fully, fully cooked, cooked. They're just frozen. frozen. nuggets that she's trying to eat. This is Oh, this oh is no, no. Stuff. Okay, okay. Before you get to that, though, though before yeah. this, though, uh, when, when Cass kind of comes to find them, and the, 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 the guy that's been in everything, the Asian guy from the Japanese, the, the Japanese guy? Yeah, yeah, um, the, the host of the Japanese. Oh, no, no, no. Loki don't like pretty boy angel. Anyway, um, Cass says, you guys have been missing for days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, Gabe, and Gabe had told them if you survive the next 24 hours. So, like, how long have they been stuck in this world? Yeah, I wondered that, too. Because Cass says days, but Gabe said 24 hours, but, you know, he's Loki the trickster at the point at this time. So it's like... How, how, how? I don't know. Are they not realizing? Like, I bet you they go home, or don't go home because they don't have a home yet. But they go to the next the diner and eat like a shit ton of food. Because think about how hungry you'd be. Yeah. If you've been missing for days and you don't realize mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Can I warm that up now? Thanks. So, yada yada yada. They learn a Harry Potter type prophecy. Yeah. That Sam and Dean will basically have to fight and kill each other. They escape. It's a good episode, and I really like it, and I like all that meta type of shit. Bunny, your final thoughts on changing channels? Yeah. I, I would I would go a seven. It it was enjoyable. It it wasn't killing me though. Like I said, it had its moments. It had, which is better than better than previous episodes of Supernatural I've seen. It it had it had moments that I really kind of liked. And it, other parts were kind of like, not so much. But yeah. I'm also getting more familiar with the characters and things like that. Um, yeah. Okay, so Bonnie gives it a seven. I'm going to give What was that? Natasha gives it a pineapple. A pineapple? A pineapple. Because it, 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 oh, Thank you for sneezing on me. Oh, no? Okay. Because it's good, 
in unless you consume too much, and then it's got bite and it kind of starts hurting your tongue. Oh, gotcha. Because it tries to eat you. Yeah. When you're eating it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the thing that's about pineapples. Pretty awesome analogy. So I like that. Yeah, yeah, no, that is a really good Yeah, that's a really good analogy. You can change your answer to pineapple too if you want, Bunny. I I'll, I'm okay with that. I, 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 I'll, I'm gonna, I'll I'll go pineapple because I think that really <laughs> says it. But eh, I I'm ask, gonna go with ask, kiwi. Ask me Ooh, about it's Scooby it's Natural. Yeah, it does the same thing. Yeah, kiwi does the same thing. Yeah. Kiwis are bitch. Kiwis are a bitch. Yeah, but I can hollow mine out and drink it. Drink out of it. Like, yeah, that's a good point. Daiquiris and shit. You can't do that with yeah. kiwi. I, I, can, I could probably turn an actual kiwi into, like into a, a bong. Glass. Oh. Uh, you'd have to get a really hard kiwi. No, I'm talking about the bird. Oh. Like oh, the bird. The bird. The bird That'd you probably could. Well, like a, like a pipe. I think the like a fruit. Pipe I think turn into a, a tiny pipe. Yeah, the fruit would be too wet. Like a Smurf bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we might have to. We might have to hollow it out. It, I. I but you would probably be smoking it through its asshole. There, if there's someone who who does, I wonder if there's someone out here who does like um, bong taxidermy. I bet you there is. I bet that's a thing. Yeah. For decoration. And remember, this is for tobacco. Yeah. For tobacco <laughs> use. And that oh, wacky yeah. tobacco. Yeah. Yeah. But I bet. We I bet gave that shit somewhere. up. <laughs> now it's just. Yeah, because no, I want my pot. pot to have that dead animal taste to it. Yeah, you know, like that decaying flesh. Yeah, yeah. I want... it's like it's like you don't just want that smoky burn. You want that flesh rotting <laughs> yeah. smoky burn. Yeah, I want uh -huh. my pot to have that Texas chainsaw massacre taste to it. I mean, it, it gives you that. It gives you that like <laughs> acidic, like almost just nauseous taste but it's like right there you know at the very back of your nose where it meets the inside of your mouth yeah, yeah. acidic i thought you meant hussid like you're 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 smoking this pot and it's just a like a hasidic jew what's with all of the pot you gotta stop this why did you turn into Seinfeld? i tried to turn well he is jewish but yeah I, but not I, like no I, I was i was trying to go for bernie sanders actually oh yeah. But I that's a difficult Sanders one for me. Ever smoked pot out of a dead animal? No. We'll have to. You, we'll have to you know out. he did. Yeah, yeah, he kind of. It was the fucking sixties, man. Yeah, yeah, you gotta kind of assume that. Kevin Obama, you can't have whiskey. Stop it. Scooby Natural. Woo! Scooby fucking natural. Scooby Natural. This was I big, fucking, funny. It was watched by two. I fucking loved it. I loved yes. it. Yes. A, a lot of people did. It was watched by 2.03 million viewers. It's the second highest rating this season behind the season premiere. It has a 9.8 on IMDb. This is this was a huge it was, episode. It was, it was really the game changer where, it comes, where general audience was concerned because yeah. like, people who – haven't watched Supernatural in years. People who hate Supernatural. I mean, like, Destiny came over and watched it. And Destiny will not watch Supernatural. But she, she tolerates but, it being on our TV when she comes over here on Saturday nights if we're watching it. Yeah. But she hates it. She doesn't like it. She'll find something else to do. But she came over and fucking watched it. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. that says something. When people who don't like Supernatural at all are like, all right, cool. I got to give this a watch because Scooby-Doo. We were all in the living room watching Scooby Natural the same way that regular people gather to watch the Super Bowl. Yeah, Destiny <laughs> and Matt showed up first. Yeah. Like they were she was like, I was I've been trying to leave since six thirty. We were trying to get over here. I'm sorry we're late. Deanna and Christian, blah blah and was just like, Okay, calm down. Shut your mouth. I'm watching my show. <laughs> yeah. I it, like, yeah. It, it, it opened with them fighting Barney. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no. But can I tell you why? I have that written down in my notes, but you oh. go ahead and tell it. No, you go ahead and okay. tell it. Okay, so they have him. Oh, the opening shot has them fighting that stuffed dinosaur because um, at the end of season 12, okay. when. Was it 12? I think. No. So. 
Oh no, the the um the um, mid season finale had them flung into uh, an alternate world, and the last shot of Sam and Dean was them. I bet you just don't do it. Ugh. The last shot of, was of Sam and Dean inside of a dinosaur footprint, what everybody had thought was a dinosaur footprint, yeah. but we're still not clear because the next episode when it came back um, was the Wayward Sisters um, the backdoor pilot. pilot. Yeah. Uh huh. So we didn't really get a good look of any of the creatures except for the one really huge monster looking thing. Uh, it's because everybody was like, for those weeks, like four or five weeks, was it six weeks, something like that? Everyone, everybody was like, oh my God, dinosaurs. Oh my God, if Dean doesn't fucking fight a dinosaur. And just the comparisons to Jurassic World and and um, the one Chris, Chris, Chris Pratt. Uh, yeah. And just like, it was insane. The fandom went crazy. And everyone was like, dinosaurs. Oh my God, dinosaurs. And so oh my God. one of the lines that one of the producers had said was to give the fans what they want in the way that they least expect. Yeah. Yeah. So that's okay. why in the opening of Scooby Natural, they were fighting a dinosaur. Good, good call. Cause, cause like they, yeah. they pretty much had me right the fuck there, right? Right in the opening of the episode. I'm like, okay. I, yeah. I could totally do this. <laughs> yeah. They, um, I've been really excited about Scooby Natural since they first announced it a while back. They announced it last year, didn't they? Oh yeah, Season I knew about 12? Scooby Natural. Like they, they, there was spoilers about um, cast coming back because they, the the end of last season, season twelve, cast dies. But everybody knew that the cast was coming back because Jared had fucked up during over the summer and was like yeah yeah scooby natural they announced it and like we uh you know the three of us were in there recording me me and misha and jensen and then jensen just was like oh dude you fucked up you could see it on his face <laughs> but jared had yeah because jared wasn't supposed to mention anything because i mean this was recorded before they even ended the season oh. of last season so like the audio was yeah because it takes forever for these freaking and, like, they had still recorded some audio up until, like, two or three weeks prior to airing. Jesus. And so, like, they knew about this episode well in advance. And Jared had fucked up and ended up spoiling the fact that Misha was going to come back for this episode. So we knew he was going to come back eventually. But, yeah, so we've known for a very long time. And people have been freaking out for a very long time. And there's even people in the fandom who have made fan art uh, years and years ago. Yeah. That have. It's like the Impala and the um, Mystery Machine. And it's just like, there's pictures of them drawn together with the gang, Scooby gang. And then when they announced that, that part of the fandom lost their shit. Because they were like, oh my god, I drew this years ago. And it was great. So yeah, we've known for a while. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and to be clear, Supernatural is not a great television show. It's not. I've never claimed it to be. Yeah. Jensen is a great actor, though. It's it's not a great television show, and fans like my wife are the first to admit that. Hell yeah. <laughs> With that in mind, I was super excited about Scooby Natural, but not because it promised to be amazing, groundbreaking entertainment. But in my mind, this was destined to be one of the greatest shark jumps ever. Yeah. You know? Good, wasn't it? Oh. Like, no, I thought, like, this can't be good. Like, yeah. this cannot be good. Like, it, 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 you're so desperate for ratings that Sam and Dean are going to be meeting the Scooby gang. Like, oh, no, this can't be good. But yeah. I was surprised yeah, I at how point. good this was. This was really good. Yeah. yeah, the writers, they had writers from Scooby-Doo write this. Yeah. yeah. And, like, they did a damn good job, like, characterization and yeah. performing Dean, doing mirrors, just, like, yeah. They did a damn. They did. It was. I was like. I was prepared for a shit show train wreck. Oh yeah, I but I was, was. I was impressed. No, I, I was. I was like, well, hot damn, they pulled it off. Plus, it's also dollar signs in the eyes for WB because they own both properties. So that's corporate synergy right there. Ah. Oh. Because they own Scooby Doo, they own Supernatural. Anyway, the episode opens with Dean fighting a, a plush dinosaur that has come to life. Uh, nod to the fans. Also, fun fact, there's a mystery machine hiding in every live-action scene. 
Really? I might have to go back and look for that now. Yeah, no, yeah, they're all over the place. They're in the pawn shop, there's one right by the entrance. And then as the boys are kind of standing by the racks of stuff at the pawn shop, there's one there on one of the shelves. And it's a fun game. You you can find a number of them throughout throughout the, the live action sequences. So that's awesome. Plus, in the beginning, Dean makes a Rocky and Bullwinkle reference. I think I missed that. That impresses me. And so the other guy comes in and says, what happened here? And, and they say, oh, a toy malfunction. And Dean just goes, oh, never buy anything from Musylvania. <laughs> I'm like, damn, that is a deep cut Rocky and Bullwinkle reference there. Like, oh, yes. They're doing sh- they do shit you like won that me all over. Time. Yeah. Like, you- there's references, like, if, unless you are a fan of that thing, you won't notice it. But there's people in the fandom who are. And so they're like, dude, did you see the writers put this reference in? Yeah, Musylvania was a country, and then uh, Bullwinkle was in charge of it for a while, and then Potsylvania tried to take over Musylvania, and and then they call Dean, not Dean, they call Sam <laughs> Bullwinkle, or Moose, no. Moose and Squirrel. Yeah, they call him Moose and Squirrel. Yeah, they call <laughs> Sam and Crowley, Dean Moose and Squirrel. Crowley called them Moose and Squirrel before they fucking killed him off. Yeah. So Sam and Dean get a TV from the pawn shop, and Dean puts it in his uh, bunker man cave. I really hate the frozen joke that he makes, though. That, that like I hated that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I really don't. That's just another. I'm, I'm not gonna mad at this. I'm not gonna mad at. Okay. I'm not gonna do okay. it. Okay. But I could. I could tell you I what is happening there. I know. Anyway, they get sucked into the TV. They find themselves in cartoon form. <laughs> Sam is all beautiful, and Dean has distracting lines on his face. <laughs> that we have talked about on the no, show no, before. No, seriously, yeah. Lines are ridiculous. And so in the beginning, they wonder if the trickster is behind this. No, he's dead. Or, or is, is he? he? And yeah. they, use that, they, they use that in the small amount of the next episode that I saw. When they, I, I only, I was trying to, my job. We as the fandom know that Gabriel's alive before Dean and Sam. Yeah. Are. Yeah, but but uh, the episode that they showed last night, I was trying to distract Eleanor and Maxwell so that they didn't bug you. I ended up seeing like the end, and so they bring Gabriel, Gabriel to Sam and Dean, and then Dean says, "But we saw him die." And then whoever the guy is who brought Gabriel Catch. to him said, "Or did you?" And I'm like, "Oh, well, that's a nice nod to the last episode because I love that line." But Gab- but we saw Gabriel die. Or did he? <laughs> see, here's the thing. They didn't see him die. They they literally, they took, Sam and Dean took Kali, one of the god, goddesses, and left. And Gabriel was sacrificing himself to kill, to, to try to kill Lucifer. Okay, yes, I read that on some supernatural And wiki. so they technically, nobody saw him die. Nobody. Lucifer is the only person that saw him die. But earlier in that same episode, uh, Kali tried to kill him with his own blade and everybody thought he was dead until Dean goes to the car and then Gabriel's hiding in the back of the car and then he gives Gabriel this pep talk and then get down get down and then Gabriel finally comes in to try to save the day and he's like hey bro and then Lucifer's like dude I taught you like all your tricks because you're my little brother yeah. and then he tries to kill him and you see the wings and everything and the whole fandom lost their shit and they were like, Gabriel, bleh! and and like they planned this out, like his return so well that uh, Richard Spate didn't shave. Um, they didn't record his his scenes until after he stopped going to uh, conventions because he doesn't shave. Oh, okay. And he had to yeah. shave for those episodes. So like that one shot when he, they finally revealed his comeback was just insane. But nobody saw him die but Lucifer. Is okay. my point. Gotcha. So that, okay. that was kind of irritating. Yeah. So yeah. So that makes no sense. So hey. So the animated boys drive to a local malt shop. Yes. Naturally, one that was in Scooby Doo. And they realize that they're in Scooby Doo. In fact, the thing that really that I that I also liked too was that they're in a specific episode of Scooby Doo. Where are you? Specifically, season one, episode 16 of the original 1969 run of Scooby-Doo in an episode entitled A Night of Frights is No Delight, which is available online. I saw it yesterday on Daily Motion. Oh, yeah. 
That was back cool. when Scooby Doo had a laugh track. Like, why did this animated show have a laugh track? <laughs> Monsters. Yeah, it's just ridiculous that Scooby Doo and the, the Flintstones for a while had laugh tracks. You're an animated cartoon. Everyone that. knows you're not live. You don't need to tell Draw us when to laugh. Yeah. Studio audience. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> to be clear, I loved 1969 Scooby Doo, the original run of Scooby Doo, mm-hmm. and I loved all of those Scooby Doo movies with celebrities like. Harlem Globetrotter and Batman and Robin. Yeah. But every other version of Scooby Doo sucks fucking ass. <laughs> I hated 1979 Scooby Doo, 1982 Scooby Doo, 1989 Scooby Doo, that weird one where they're solving uh, supernatural mysteries with uh, Vincent Price. I hated all of them. Yeah. And fuck you, Scrappy Doo. Yes. You're a piece of shit, and I was upset to see that you were in the montage in this episode. Because Scrappy Doo was in this episode, that upset me. But at least he didn't have any lines. Yes. But but it what I loved is that it it, it just felt like Scooby Doo. Yeah. You know, it yeah. looked like Scooby Doo. It looked a little, a little updated from the original '60s. You know, but it it looked yeah. like Scooby Doo. All the characters, it, 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 like everything about it, and that's that's really what I was loving. Yeah, what I loved about this episode was that it highlighted the similarities and differences of both shows. Yeah. So, okay, both of these shows travel the country fighting ghosts and monsters. But then also uh, Sam and Dean fight real monsters and not, not crooked land developers in masks. Yeah. Oh, also, also, the episode after Scooby Natural, I watched the beginning of that episode, and in the beginning, uh, Dean says jinkies. Jinkies? Okay. Yeah, he does say jinkies. They're, they're, they're fighting some whatever. They're doing something, and, and Dean just goes, <gasps> jinkies. It's like, oh, Jesus Christ. Is son of a also, bitch his catchphrase? Hmm? Is son of a bitch Dean's catchphrase? Wait, wait, what did you say? Son of a bitch. Yes, that's his catchphrase. That's a son lame. A bitch. That's a lame catchphrase, man. Yeah. <laughs> his original catchphrase was "Pass me the socket wrench, mother." That was his original catchphrase. Ah. Oh, and then after that, it was wham, wham, wazzle. <laughs> oh, that's another catchphrase of his. I want to note that Matthew Lillard was shaggy yes. in this. In that this? Matthew Lillard was shaggy. Yes. Oh, oh okay. Something else, I, something else I, I, I was wondering. Okay. Was, was that actually their voices? Because they really had, like, cartoony sounding voices. That was their voices, yeah. That was their voices. Was, yeah, that was them playing them. But this is the first time that they've done any sort of voice work or, or animated whatever, so they mm-hmm. really went kind of over the top with their voice acting. Yeah. So that might have been what, what you were hearing there. Which I, which I liked, because it felt more yeah. like a cartoon. Yeah. But I like this I, I like this special because it hits all the right notes. Shaggy and Scooby's eating prowess. Yes. Uh, uh Shaggy Scooby and Dean eating prowess, the bookcase with a secret passage, the newspaper with no words, splitting up to look for clues, the chase montage. Yes. The chase montage. <laughs> But it also hits like the supernatural beats. Dean wants to fuck Daphne. Mm -hmm. Sam is overflowing with logic. Plus, this time the ghosts are real. And I like the fact that that reality fucks with the Scooby gang. Yes. Uh huh. And and now, uh, you know, uh, Shaggy has a broken arm and yada, yada, yada. Um, Fred was a dick. So, yeah. And and, and I, I think. 
we haven't talked about this, but I think we can we can both agree that Daphne is the more attractive of the two women. Yes. Yeah. Not sure why. I think it's possibly the skirt and the knee high socks, or and, or just maybe uh, just the glasses. But but there's something about Daphne that definitely makes her the superior of the two Scooby Doo females. What glasses? Uh, uh, Daphne. She wears glasses. No, that's and, Velma. And she... Oh, oh, Velma, Velma. Yes, that. Okay, so, so I just, I just wrote the the wrong name down. But yes, Velma is the more attractive of the two. I don't know if I, I, I don't know if I would say Velma is more attractive of the two. Velma's the one you can get. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like Daphne is kind of unattainable. Yeah. You know? Unless you're wearing an ascot. Unless you're wearing an ascot, yeah. And yeah. that's kind of a lot to ask, I think. Yeah. You know? But but yeah. but Velma You get a couple of Jaeger bombs in Velma. Hell yeah. And I am Betting that's a wild cat. Oh. Oh. Um, Bunny, your final thoughts on Scooby Natural? Awesome. It, it, yeah, I love this. I love this. It, this came out a lot better than I thought it was going to. It opens with them fighting a giant plush dinosaur what is not to yeah. love yeah yeah no that's wonderful but this is this this is really good this is really good shit i i was i was very happy with this they had they they just anyway. had me straight out of the gate and 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 and, and i've tried for the show but i didn't really want to like supernatural <laughs> yeah, yeah, Un- under understandable. Yeah. Anyway, but hats off. Yeah, hats off to them because this is damn good. This is really damn good. Anyway, that is it for homework this week, and we sincerely and respectfully hope so. Sincerely, we hope. That your hearts, minds, and some other third thing have all been suitably opened. Ah, but don't think you're getting out of here that easily, Buck Chacho. Buck Chacho, a combination of Bucko and Muchacho, verbal copyright 2018, Reverend Steve and the Pope on Film podcast. Because uh, don't forget next week's homework assignment. And for next week, we're going to start doing something that I'm excited about. Okay. For homework next week, we will start by watching and discussing one movie. A movie that is in no way big enough to carry a full episode. Okay. So we will take this tiny movie and give birth to it in the homework segment. Next week... We will be watching. It's all over fucking YouTube and 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 also I think archive.org. Next week we will be discussing the 1958 film Terror in the Haunted House. Okay. That's that one haunted house movie from the 50s which no one would have remembered at all were it not for the fact that it tried that it used subliminal messages in the movie. Yeah. To, yeah. To try and scare you. So every like three minutes or five minutes, they would flash something like a scary face or a message in the film to try and scare you more. And they gave it like some name, like psychonomatron or yes. something like that. Subliminatron. Yeah. So they were literally just inundating you with subliminal messages. And so the movie disappeared for a while because eventually, like in the 60s and 70s, people realized, oh, yeah, this is kind of fucked up. So the movie disappeared. And then 
Rhino Home Video brought it back and added their own Rhino subliminal messages to the film. So if you so they released it on VHS, but but it would be subliminal messages. But then like every twenty minutes, it would be buy more Rhino videos. <laughs> So that is next week. So join us next week for more homework with the Popon Film Podcast.